Thank you. Thank you, my boy. 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you, my boy. Thank you, my boy. Thank you for all that you've done, Lord, for yet. Father, we give praise to you. We give the glory. We give the honor to you. Salvation and strength. Power and might. Wisdom and honor belong to you, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we love you. And we give God praise. We give you praise, Father. We give you praise for all the great and glorious things that you're doing. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Wonderful God, wonderful God, wonderful God, wonderful God, wonderful Savior, oh my Savior, oh my Savior, Jesus, 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 Jesus,
Hallelujah. 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 Wonderful Savior. Wonderful God. Wonderful Jesus. 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 Hey, God. Wonderful God. Wonderful God. Mighty God, everlasting Father. Oh, Prince of Peace. Oh, Prince of Peace. Oh, Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace. We love you. We love you. We thank you. In the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, excellent God. Thank you, excellent God. Thank you, excellent God. Thank you for all the things you're doing, even right now. In the name of Jesus, thank you for raising us up, bringing us in out of the darkness. Oh, God, forgiving us of all sins, blotting out our transgressions, teaching us to love you the more. In the name of Jesus, Father, we'll focus our attention on you. We focus our life, our loving, our living, our living, our living. We focus our living on you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Wonderful Savior, excellent God, speak to us today. Speak to us in your word as we share your word with this, your people. Father, speak to us. Give us new understanding. Give us depth of your word, God. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Give us quick comprehension, a revelational knowledge, Father. In the name of Jesus, oh God, that we will hear and understand, oh God, your word. Let your word be revealed unto us. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, reveal truth to us. Reveal truth. Reveal your truth to us. In the name of Jesus, let it be revealed. Let it be revealed. Let it be revealed unto us. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord God. In the name of the Lord God. Hallelujah. We thank you. 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 We thank you for the things that you are doing even right now. The thing that you're about to do in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we give praise to you. We give the glory and the honor. We give the glory and the honor. We give the glory and the honor in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 In the name of Yeshua, I'm a In the name of Oh God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We bless you, God. We bless you. We bless you, excellent God. We bless you, wonderful Savior. For life, for health, for strength, for peace of mind. We thank you. In the name of Jesus. Let your glory be revealed. Let your mystery be made known. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to your name, Father. Glory to your name, Father. Glory to your name, Father. Glory to your name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father. We glorify your name in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, wonderful Savior. 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 In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, wonderful Savior. Marvelous Savior. Marvelous God. Marvelous God. Hallelujah. Thank you for this day. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for bringing us out of the darkness and into your marvelous light. In the name of Jesus. 
We're so delighted to see each of you here with us, Woman of God, Anna Davis, 90.5 FM Radio there at Wayne County, uh, Joseph, Georgia. Thank you for being with us. We thank God for you. Amen. We appreciate, hallelujah, the God you serve. Thank you for being with us. Amen. Um, Jennifer Harris, Woman of God, we appreciate you. Appreciate your spirit. God bless you. Layla Anderson, we appreciate you. Pastor Deborah Cooper, the Lord bless you. Keep your heaven smile upon you. All of you, the Lord's people, thank you for being with us. Amen. We're excited about the Lord. He's doing marvelous things. And we praise him for this opportunity to be able to come before you one more time. Amen. In the word of the Lord. So we thank God. Amen. We were uh, anticipating this time earlier and uh, just couldn't wait to get here because we love him and I love the people of God. Amen. I look forward to this day every day. Yeah, I look forward to it every day. Even there are days when I'm not here, I'm looking forward to it. So thank God for Jesus. Um, we're not going to delay much longer, but we're going to go to the word of the Lord. Thank God for the lifeline being in place with us. Uh, God bless into your lifeline. Again, our title for today is, uh, this is part two of when God reveals mysteries of his established purpose. This is part two. When God reveal mysteries of his established purpose. Part two, uh, a yearning for for revelation knowledge. This is a yearning for uh, revelation knowledge. This is lesson number two. Galatians chapter one, verses 13 through 24. We expect your life to change for better forever. You must expect the same. And today for our subtopic of this lesson, we want to entitle our subtopic, glory to God, uh, divine revelation is given to effectively manifest Jesus. Divine revelation is given to, to effectively manifest Jesus. Yeah, divine revelation is given to effectively manifest Jesus. Father, give us understanding here. Divine revelation is given to most expect effectively uh, manifest Jesus to, to make our job more clear, more plain, more profound. Yeah, and, and to, to illuminate Jesus, to carry him. We carry Jesus in our body. We carry him in our vessel. We are the temple of the living God. And in this temple, there's an anointed Jesus. There's an anointed Jesus who reside in us. The anointing of his spirit, the spirit of the living God, the presence of the living God. All of them all dwell in us. The triune Godhead dwell within us and our life carry them. We carry them in our heart, in our spirit. Yeah, our, our body becomes the vehicle to carry the glory of God in our present life, in this, in this dominion. So if this dominion a uh, Pastor Charles Wisdom Rogers, I see you, sir. If this dominion where you dwell there in Liberia, West Africa, if they're about to see Jesus, they're about to see Jesus through the life you live. And the life you live, you must become the vehicle. We must become the vehicle. I must become the vehicle that carry the Lord's presence, to carry his glory, to carry his presence, to carry his anointing, carry his grace, everything that embodies Jesus, everything that embodies him, the word, he is the word of God. He is the lamb of God. He's the express image of God. And not only is he's in our life, but the Holy Ghost is in our life. And he says that the father will come. The son will come who's the G who's Jesus and the Holy Ghost, and we will make our abode in you. So we carry him. And as we carry him, we must express him. Our life must be that radiant uh, 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 manifestation of Jesus. We 
have to manifest him. We must showcase him, broadcast him, illuminate him, cause him to shine through our lives. But uh, yeah, yeah, darkness and light, they cannot shine together for there must be a ruling light. And I trust that the light that rules you is not the light of darkness, but I trust it is the light of God. And he says that ye are the light of the world. You're the light of the world. The darkness comprehends it not, um, but you are the light of the world. So you must illuminate the God we serve. You must manifest his presence. Oh, Father. Father, I pray now that thou, God, would give this people, what people? Everyone that is privy to this message, everyone that will listen, everyone that will take the time to involve himself in this word, Father, that they would not only premeditate, but uh, begin to saturate themselves in the word of God and see themselves as a carrier of your anointing, just as it was the the, the, the Levites who carried the Ark of the Covenant, we must carry you. I know your spirit. And I know that you can ride on the wings of the wind. I know you go anywhere you want to go. And I know there's nothing that can limit your movement. You're everywhere at the same time, but you desire to inhabit the praises of your people. You desire to live in our hearts. And if we would just avail ourselves and invite you in, we will be able to carry your glory, carry your presence, carry the image of the living God. So make us the vehicles that carry you. Make us the vehicle that carry you throughout the earth, Father. Make us that vehicle. And because you can be everywhere at the same time, make each of us the vehicle that carries you. Yeah, yeah. Walk in us, live in us, move in us, breathe in us. Show yourself strong through our lives. Father, affect those things that we are concerned with. Yeah. Affect affect the community that we that we live in. Affect the job that we work uh, on and the people that we meet daily. Father, affect our family. Be the effect of our family. Be the effect of everything that involves us. Be the effect of everything that grasps our attention. Be the effect of everything God that we concern ourselves with. Be in it. Be in it. Be in it. Don't, 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 we, we don't want to do anything and you're not in it. I don't, I don't want to do something and you're not in it, Father. Now, I, I want you in it. I want you all in it, all up in it. Yeah. So our lesson, Galatians 1, and the second part of the lesson, verses 13 through 24, we want to entitle this portion, Divine Revelation, is given to most effectively manifest Jesus. It's the purpose to most effectively manifest Jesus. Uh, 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 Layla, uh, Leela, you, you want to manifest Jesus? Uh, 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 then we, we inquire of Jesus revelation knowledge. Give us revelation. Give us revelation. Reading the Bible will give you a perspective of Jesus. Reading the Bible will give you a perspective of God. Reading the Bible will give you perspective of heaven, demons and devils. And give you perspective of Christianity, salvation. It gives you perspective of all of these things. But then there comes a point in our reading that we can become inundated with what was what, what was meant by that. Uh, when, when Paul said this, when John said this, when uh, Moses was speaking and, and when Isaiah said what he said, what were they really saying to us? What were they really conveying? And so you run to a roadblock and not know the depth of what we're saying. But the moment you begin to embrace the Lord, Father, I know you love me and I love you. And I know your word says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Your word tells us that you will not leave us, nor will you forsake us. 
and we will come to know that you rise on the wings of the wind. You can be anywhere at the same time. But as Moses said to you, Father, show me your glory. Father, I, I, I asked of you to show me your glory through revelation knowledge. Show me your glory through the revealed word. Show me your glory. Reveal yourself to me. I, I'm on a mission and I don't want to get it wrong. I'm on a mission. I need to get it right. I am on a mission, Father. And I don't want to just speak what, you know, that, 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 that just seems right. Because I heard about those people in the Bible that they did things according to what was in their heart. They lived their life based upon what was in their heart. There was no set rules. There was no set government. There was no set, uh, oh Jesus, there was no Bible before them. But today we're asking you, reveal yourself to us. Give us revelation or insight, revelation or knowledge. And, and, and because we know Jesus is real, we know, uh huh, we, we, we know, we, we just believe it so intently, we know he's real. And because we know he's real, now illuminate us, give us revelation or knowledge concerning him. And, and I believe that. As we look at the scripture today, you're going to find out that this is why it is so necessary to have revelation, insight, revelation, knowledge. Jennifer Harris, this is the reason. As we look into the lesson, we begin to unfold the scriptures, then we're going to see why it was so important to have this illuminance of Christ. So the 13th verse picks up and says, far. You have heard, let me, let me back up. I, I've got to back up to verse number 12. I don't want to just jump there. Uh, let me back up to the uh, 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 some of what was in our um, first part of the lesson. Uh, I'm going to go to verse 8. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. You're going to have all types of people saying things about Jesus, saying things about God, saying things about heaven, saying things about angels. You'll find people praying to angels, calling angels, summoning angels. Come, angel, come. And, and they have the audacity to give the angels name. They go online and they go to books and they'll, and they'll start seeing that there are some angels that have names. But the ones that have names, they are not of God. I, I, I'm not talking about the one that God allow us to know about, as in Gabriel and Michael. But there's others that uh, that, that that you have th discovered them. But you've discovered those angels in dark places. You've discovered those angels in a in a fallen places. You've discovered those angels in a broken state. Yeah, yeah, and. and, and uh, and I know you might say, well, they're your personal assigned angel. Well, if they, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, be careful of the people you listen to because there are all types of people that will inundate you with all kinds of things. Because, uh, because uh, one reason why it is not necessary, not important, and it is not the will of God that you know their names because when it's time for you to seek the Lord's face, you're going to find yourself calling on the angel instead of the Lord Jesus. So you're going to find yourself, Michael, Michael, come help me, Michael. Michael, come help me. Gabriel, come help me. We are not to pray to Michael. We are not to pray to Gabriel. We are to pray to Jesus, the Christ of God. And so many have been calling on Raphael and Sinclair, and they come up with all these other names that they have gotten from someplace and don't even know the purpose of these other uh, 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 angels. But then as the angel that appeared to Jacob and Jacob was after his name, he said, what, what, why are you after my name seeing that my name is secret? I'm not supposed to reveal my name to you because no one summons me from here but Father. God is the only one that summons angels and sends them on assignment. 
because when you know their name, you're going to be summoning them. And, uh -huh, and, and you're going to try to get them to bec uh, become your errand boy. Yeah. God don't want you to know them like that. He know you. He know where you are. He know what you're in need of. He know how to send them on assignment, but not that you have to know who they are. He already know what thing you're in need of before you ask him. So therefore, um, but though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. You don't have no, you don't have no bench with an angel, preacher, pastor, uh, prophet, apostle, uh, shepherd, teacher, or no person trying to inundate you with something that erroneous. You, they, they don't need to uh, mislead you. You've been misled long enough. And you, now that you're trying to get it together, uh, you don't need an angel or a person trying to give you something to lead you on something that's wrong. Let him be accursed. And as we said before, so say I uh, now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, then that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men of God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. This is what I'm giving you, Paul said. It's not after man. I'm not giving you this because it's after man. Paul says, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, you've got to also understand that at that time when Paul came along, they still had the Old Testament. They didn't have Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Romans, and uh, Acts, and, and Galatians, and Ephesians, and they didn't have any of that. They didn't have Titus. They didn't have First and Second Peter. Uh, they didn't have uh, 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 Thessalonians. They didn't have that. They didn't even have the Revelations yet. All they still had was the Old Testament. That's all they had was the Old Testament. And, and, and they had the, the, the apostles uh -huh, began to make what Jesus did, what they saw with their eyes and witnessed him doing. They began to dialogue that, write those things, compile them in parchments so that people could see them. So their mission was to showcase Jesus. Their mission was to talk about Jesus. Have you not heard? Have you not known? Have you not heard? Where were you? He came. He walked among us. He lived among us. We expected him to exalt his throne. We expect him to raise up his kingdom among us and overthrow the kingdom of Herod. We were thinking that he was going to physically do that. But that's not what he did. And they could not tell that story effectively. They could not tell that story most effectively of Jesus until the Holy Ghost came. Because everything up to that point was just like a story. They remembered it, but it was like a story. They saw it. They witnessed Jesus with them. They saw the miracle that he performed. They saw all the wonderful things that he did. But all of that was just like a great big story to them. Because he died like all the others that died. He died like Abraham, like Isaac. He died like Jacob. He died, he died like all of the kings that have come before him died. He died like all of the other prophets and the people that came before him died. He died like them. But he, he raised up and they did not get up. That was a great phenomenon to have him get up prophesied and said, I'm going to get up. I'm going to sit on the right hand of my father. I'm going to get up. None of those other persons ever got up except who God authorized to get up. 
So up until that point, their story needed some help. Their testimony needed some help because the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the high priest, the commoners, the centurions, and all those around them were trying to make it out of liar. They tried to they conjured lies, even when they said, and, and here it is when he uh, uh, was dead, it says, can we uh, uh, seal this tomb? Because you remember that liar, that, that man, uh, they had a different name for him. You heard what he said, that he's going to get up. So let us seal it and let us put, put men there. He's, we heard them say that uh, he will destroy this temple and raise it up on the third day. Did you not hear this? Yep, we did hear it. So let's just go ahead on and seal this tomb that he is in. Let's make sure he don't get up. And then when he did get up, then they tried to say, let's just say his body was stolen. His body was stolen. And so that is a myth. There is a lot of a negative thing that is circulating throughout the world today about the, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Not everybody believe it. So do you think that this was just going to help because you were there? Because you walked with Jesus and he showed himself to some people? He showed himself to a few uh, uh, 50 here and a few people there and a few hundred here. You thought that was going to help uh, 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 the story of Jesus? God had a different plan because that wasn't really going to help the story because even though it would have helped the story, now they've got to check the validity of the people. This man is just old fisherman. He doesn't know nothing about that. That man, old tax collector, but he was a robber. He was stealing from people. That man right there, he's doing, and they want to pull dirt on all of them. So they were up against a storm. They were up against hard times. And everything tried to make them out of a liar. Paul knew this. Paul didn't. He says, he said, but I certify you, you I, I certify you, brother. I guarantee you, brother, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. Then he goes on to say, before, before he said it, he said, For do I now persuade man, men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Before that, verse 9, he says, As we said before, uh, 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 before, uh, um, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, then that ye have received, let him be a curse. People didn't mind lying. They wanted to water it down. But Paul goes on to say in verse number 12 of that chapter from yesterday, for I neither received it of man. I did not receive this gospel of Matthew. I didn't receive this of Peter. James, John, I did not receive this of uh, Luke. I did not receive this of Bartholomew, Andrew, Philip. I did not re receive this of uh, uh, of any of those fellows. I didn't even see them. So during that time, when all of this was happening, all Paul knew was the Old Testament writing. All that Paul knew was what was said by uh -huh, uh, 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 the, 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 the deliverer and the prophets. He knew that very well. So in this case, he's saying, I need revelation. But he didn't say he need revelation. I, I'm saying he need revelation. Uh, because at this point, he thinking he's doing God a favor. He too is going about looking at them as if they're a bunch of heretics. Paul says in that verse 12, for neither receive I, I re neither receive uh, it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. So what do you mean you were taught this by the revelation of Jesus Christ? Paul, elaborate. What do you mean? You were taught this by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now we pick up with our lesson 
for today in this 13th verse. For ye have heard of my conversation. You've heard about me. If you haven't heard about me, it's time that you hear about me again. For ye have heard of, of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion. What? Paul says, I'm all up in the Jews' religion. I'm, I'm, I'm a believer of the Jewish religion, the Jewish rituals. You heard about me from the conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure, I persecuted the church of God and notice what he said and wasted it. I came out after the church of God with a great vendetta. It was my job to prove them all wrong. I was one of them that I made it my agenda to either make them recant their statement, to take it back, to denounce him, to throw them in jail, to make this what they were preaching, make it look like it was foolish, that it was a non-effect. Paul says, I wasted it. And, check this out, and profited advanced to give an edge to give a nudge to Jews religion yeah they were going under but because of what I've done I was causing the Jewish religion the Jewish religion to shine and profit in the Jews religion above many my equals Paul I stood up I was shining above many of my equals in my own nation being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my father. Yes, I was zealous of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yes, I was jealous of David. Yes, I was jealous of Isaiah, Zephaniah, Zach Zachariah, Hosea. Yes, you talking to me. I was zealous of Nehemiah and ensuring that the temple must be erected. I'm one of them. I am a Pharisee of the Pharisee. I need the temple to be erected. Paul is boasting here and let him know I did these things. I'm exceedingly uh, zealous of the tradition of my fathers. But when it pleased God, notice here, but when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb, <laughs> Paul just testified, come on, Paul, come on, Paul. But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, what was the assignment, Paul? Why did he do all of this? to reveal his son in me. Paul saying what I went through, to be knocked off of my beast of burden, and I'm seeing this bright light, and I'm hearing, Saul, Saul, why persecutors thou me? And I'm not, see, I'm not knowing who, the, I didn't see a person, but I hear the voice. Everybody else was trembling, they're falling to the ground. And I asked him, who art thou, Lord? He says, I'm Jesus whom thou persecutest. Don't you know it's hard for you to kick against the pricks? <laughs> you know who you're wrestling with? You know who I am? So Paul is saying, but when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, this is the purpose, to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathens. Immediately, I conferred with, I, I, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. In other words, Paul says when this happened, when this happened, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. I had a conference, but it was not with flesh and blood. I had insight, not with flesh and blood. I was in conversation, but not with flesh and blood. Listen, if you're going to reveal Christ, and this is why I came to this point, if you're going to reveal Christ, divine revelation is given to most effectively manifest Jesus. 
Paul had a different understanding of him. He didn't like it. He didn't care for that gospel, what they were preaching. Paul was against it. And there's so many people who are against this salvation, against this God, against Jesus, the Christ of God. They're trying to say that uh, 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 he, he, he's, uh, he, you know, and they make joke about Jesus Hernandez and Jesus Gonzalez and and and, and Jose and and all these other things. But and they try to make jokes and crack jokes and he's a white man Jesus and he's this and he's that and he, he, you know and ain't no blue eyed blonde haired Jesus and no you're right there is no blue eyed and blonde haired Jesus that was the figment of what somebody conjured but the Lord told us not to make images, not to serve images, not to bow to any images. But now when you go to certain sanctuaries, certain churches, they have a picture of what they call Jesus on the, on the altar And those places are shrines Those places are, 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 are cults Why? Because we do not serve and bow to idols We do not serve and bow to images So you place the big old image there And it's not who he is The devil has encroached upon your belief And got you believing something that erroneous got you believing a lie and you're thinking you're serving Jesus of a great big old poster with a blue eyed somebody somebody blue eyed and long blonde hair and got him they paint him a picture trying to make him look pious and deep not realizing that's not who he is that's not what he looked like you bought some Bibles and they put some pictures they put some images in the picture and you're thinking that's who he is that's not who he is, dear and sirs. That's not who he is. That's not what he looked like. Because even in the region of place where he dwelt, in the same region of people where he was ministering, he, uh, uh, the, the pigment of his skin, the pigmentation there, is not, it's not even who he is. It's not. While you're trying to give us a Roman citizen, a Roman Jesus, he's not. You're trying to make Jesus out of a Roman uh, uh, a citizen, an Anglo-Saxon person. No, baby, you keep your little ang Anglo-Saxon person. That's not who he is. This is not to defame. This is not to belittle. This is not to poke fun at the Anglo-Saxon people. But when it comes to you saying that that's who Jesus is, wrong answer. That's not who he is. And the Bible tells us to not do this. Don't bow down to these images. Don't do this. That's an abomination. But yet, if you insist on doing it, you are defaming the temple of God. Not just the physical temple, the house that you serve and you says that this is the house of God. And you're wondering how come no uh, person have got saved there. How nobody have given their life there. Nobody got healed. Nobody got delivered. Nobody, nobody. Nobody came in. And the only one that went out where well, they were dying there. You worse than those uh, 400 uh, uh, prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of the groves. You're worse than them. Baal! Baal! Oh, Baal! Come see about us, Baal! I don't know how they call Baal. This is my rendition. This is my verdict of how they call Baal. But they were calling Baal and leaping on the altar and cutting themselves, but Baal would not come. Some of us, our people, jumping around the altar, dancing around the altar, uh, tambourine drums and guitars and organs and I love me some organs some B3, B2 I, I love me some organs, I love me some guitar now trust me, I love some music but people of God we got to wake up because there we have the glitter, we have the glist we have the horns, we have the little figurine, the little angelic figurines uh, uh, at the altar we have the little uh, figurines of other things at the altar and we're thinking that this is what worship is. No, you have you have detoured into something abominable. And just as it was in Old Testament says that the people in that time, 
they did what they thought was right in their eyes. And you're serving God from a way that you think is right in your eyes. And you're just like them. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't do that. You have a form of godliness, but you're denying the power thereof. But here's the thing. If you want to really know Jesus, let it be showcased through your walk, through your talk, through the lesson you live and the lesson you teach. How is that? By you getting in your prayer chamber uh, and getting uh, in, in your one-on-one -on -one relationship, having a one-on-one -on -one relationship with him, and you began to steal away like Moses stealed the way. Like Moses went up into the mountain with God, not once, but more than once. Show me your glory. And Moses didn't come out until his face was illuminated. Show me your glory. I, I want to see your glory. Until God began to write on tablets of stones. Till God began to download some things to Moses. He came out, oh my God, with the vision of heaven. He came out with a vision of worship, a vision of, 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 of an ark of a covenant, a vision of a tabernacle, a vision of, 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 of things that uh, was unmentionable. God gave him divine help and Moses articulated it and they began to design it as he articulated it because he had revelation insight, something that God revealed to him. You're not going to know true worship until you find yourself on your face before God. Father, give me revelational insight. Because all this other stuff is tradition. Paul says it. I was serving the tradition of my father. How many of you all, how many of us are serving the traditions of our father? How many of us go to the place? Now, you, you never hear Jesus doing this. You didn't hear about him going to uh, uh, the, uh, the synagogue or the temple and then they had the tambourines and all the little stuff and they start jumping and shouting but they hear, they hear they're saying we're going to dance like David dance, we're going to dance like David dance and well, however they do y'all going to mess me up with some song but yet they're trying to get their little dance like David dance and they're doing some stuff and they all uh, uh, begin to serenade an image that they conjured. No, baby. You want true worship? Find yourself in his presence. Bowing before him. Find yourself in his presence. Lay aside your plate. Find yourself in his presence. Put away your food and that thing that is convenient to you. Find yourself in his presence. Lay before him. Come before him with fasting. Come before him with a broken spirit. And a, con a broken and a contract spirit He will in no wise cast out Find yourself laying aside those things That have been pleasurable to you Find yourself getting away from all those things That have become our father's tradition Show me your way father Speak to my heart Give me that thing that's relevant Give me that thing that is true That I might know you that I might serve you from a true, uh, uh, with a true perspective, and I, uh, 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 fr fr from a, a heartfelt place, Father, I pray that you would show me, give me a revelation of Jesus, because the assignment is I must preach about Him, I must talk about Him, I must reveal Jesus. But how do I reveal somebody who I've not personally seen? How do I reveal somebody who I have not looked upon? How do I reveal somebody? How do I talk about him? I was not there in the garden of Gethsemane with him. I was not there when he walked on the water. I was not there when he raised the dead. All I know is what he did for me in my life. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. Why did he call me from my mother's womb? Why did he call me by his grace? He gave me an assignment just like he gave Adam an assignment. He told Adam to go forth and name all the creatures that he have 
are created. He told Paul, come, reveal Jesus to me. And there it is, 16 verse, to reveal his son. And I want you to do it in your body. I don't want you to paint his picture on a wall, Paul. I don't want you to flash his picture on some silhouette. I don't want you to carve some graven image out about him, but to reveal his son in me. To reveal his son in me. If you can't reveal Jesus in you, if you can't reveal Jesus, if you can't showcase him, manifest him, show Jesus in you, your life must represent him. Your life must display him. Your life must manifest him. But here's the thing. If you're not doing what he did, you're not manifesting Jesus. To manifest him, to reveal him, you, you need to see more than just kindness. You need to see more than just some goodness. Because the devil is, is a master of goodness, but he's not the master of truth. He's a master of that thing that looks good to the eye. But that thing is full of deception. He points them to the tree in the midst of the garden. A tree of good and evil. But Adam did not need to know what was good, nor evil, because he already had good. He already had the wisdom of God. He's, he's made in his image. He don't need to be exposed to what is not of God. Because God is truth. He did not say, serve me in goodness. I am a spirit and they that worship me must worship me in goodness and in spirit. God did not say that. You worship him in spirit and in truth. So a lot of people doing a lot of good things. Good things doesn't save you. A lot of people who are just genuinely good doesn't mean that they're saved there are some rich people millionaires, billionaires, they're doing some good things a lot of people have given good uh, donations, a lot of people have doing good things and saving people and, and, and being a hero those are good acts but are they saved? have they given their life? do they believe in him? we need more than just goodness but when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to do what? To reveal his son in me. And this is how I'm going to do it. That I might preach him among the heathens. That I might preach him among those persons who I was saying uh -huh, that, that I was just, that, that they was following the, the, the Jews' religion. People who don't know Jesus and they don't even know God. Uh, people who are not inundated with salvation. One day, I'm asking God to help me to deliver a word, Pastor Cooper, to show how God had an assignment that was bigger than we know, bigger than what we know. That God wanted his sons to be the leaders of dominions, principalities, and powers. He gave that to his sons. His sons, who he called sons at the original intent, they were not men as we know them. Lucifer fell in that category as a son. So many other angelic being, angelic, I didn't say angels, but angelic beings fell in that in that uh, uh, in that template as a son of God. And that's why when the story goes about Job, that there was a day when the sons of God appeared before God. That's an old writing. This is not something that happening, you know, uh, uh, in Nehemiah's day. This is not something that happening in Isaiah's day. This is not something that's happening, you know, in, in Daniel's day. This is something that go all the way back 
that when God began to give Moses a download of how he created the heaven and the earth, this goes back during the time when God gave Moses insight of a man by the name of Job. And when the sons of God appeared before God, Lucifer also came because he had right to come. He was summoned by God. He, he, he came, he came. From whence cometh thou? Oh, true and fro. What are you doing? And, and they're talking like Lucifer ain't done nothing. Oh, what, what are you doing? What are you, what are you doing there? I'm just going up and down the earth. What are you doing? I, I'm just seeking whom I might devour. Have you considered my servant, Job? Yeah, yeah, I, I saw Job. I have my eyes on Job. But I also know that uh, that uh, he, he doesn't serve you for nothing. You, you, you got a hedge about him. I'm not foolish. I, I know you got a hedge about him. And so I never mess with him because I can see the hedge. I know it's spiritual, but you know I can see the hedge. But if you remove the hedge, I make him curse you to your face. There's a day when the sons of God appear before God. All right, look like we want to lose our signal. I don't know what just happened. I don't have a clue what just happened. I'm not realizing, I don't know what's going on here. All I know is that um, we lost connection. We lost connection. And I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Yeah. All I know is that I lost connection. I'm sorry, I do apologize. All I know is that for some reason, um, my monitor went out, but I'm still online. And, and I don't know, I look like I lost connection on Facebook, but we're still live on YouTube. We're still live on YouTube, uh, but I just don't know why we lost connection on Facebook. That's, that's the problem. So, pardon me. I'm looking, trying to find out what we can do to resolve this issue. Yeah. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I do apologize. I don't know what happened. Uh, but I thank God for Jesus. I don't know what happened what happened just then uh, YouTube is still running if you can see me YouTube give me a shout out say something give me some thumbs up or something uh, but look like we've lost our signal on Facebook we lost our signal on Facebook but we're up and running on YouTube my monitor just went out and 
anyway anyway let me just go ahead on and carry on father i thank you for what you're doing uh in the name of jesus and you want us to yeah to reveal your son in me that i might preach him among the heathens immediately i conferred not with flesh and blood neither went i up to jerusalem to them which were apostles before me uh-huh he said i didn't even go there i didn't even go there i didn't go to jerusalem I, I didn't go there because, and I know there were apostles before me. They walked with Jesus, but he gave me encounter. Something that I needed in order so that I can preach him more effectively. I can showcase him more effectively. If you have been around Jesus, desire Jesus, uh, you've been around church, I know. You've been around Sunday school, I know. You've been around, but if you notice, church is it becoming a little more traditional. And, and, and Sunday school becoming a little more traditional and, and we got our own form, forms of worship have become a little more traditional we're doing all these things and they're looking a little more traditional why not ask God for revelational knowledge why not ask him to reveal himself show me your glory God to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathens and then he says, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me. I didn't even go that route. He said, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. Then after three years, I wasn't even around. He said, I was not even around them. And then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. Just 15 days, that's all, just 15 days. But I was with, uh, uh, I was in Arabia. I went somewhere totally different. I wanted, uh, uh, um, I, I wanted encounter. So when you want encounter, sometimes you got to get away from everybody else. You got to get away from the, uh, 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 the traditions of life. You got to get away from family and friends. You got to get away from people who knew you. You got to get away from people who once served the way you served, did things the way you did things. You got to get away from all of that. Paul said, this is the thing that I did. Yeah. I, I uh, And then I went to Peter. But others of the apostles saw I none. Say James, the Lord's brother, now the thing which I write unto you, behold, before God I lie not. Afterward I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. But they had heard only that we which persecuted uh, uh, but they had heard only that he which persecuted us in time past now preaches the faith which once he destroyed and they glorified God in me Father I thank you for your word I thank you for allowing us to do what we do I don't know what is going on but I thank you for this opportune moment. I thank you, Father, for giving us insight. Thank you for letting your glory be revealed, letting your mystery be made known. Goodbye. I thank you, Father, for speaking to us. And let your, let, let, let your word be heard. Speak to us today, Father. And we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, whatever is blocking our social media platform we pray that it get worked out that you deal with it Father and help us and we give you praise and the glory and honor is yours in Jesus mighty name we have prayed